Here we are. Okay. Uh, let's see. Give it a second here. It's uh, It's been a while since I've done one of these. Welcome to TMI Live number 54, I think. Uh, exploring Explorations. Uh, I took a little bit of a hiatus over the last couple months um, teaching this course. <laughs> hey, S.A.W. Uh, I was teaching this course, uh, which Mr. S.A.W. was part of, uh, Understanding Media Intensive. Um, and it proved to be very intensive, so I took a little break from my usual Tuesday night thing. Um, it's Tuesday night. It's 9 p.m., and uh, usually on Tuesday nights, I'm here in the scriptorium uh, cataloging and inventorying and exploring Eric McLuhan's books. Um, I thought uh, in the reboot here uh, in the new year, I would do something a little bit different, a little more intentional. What I was doing before was I was just bringing you along as I was doing this sort of dull, repetitive cataloging, uh, inventorying thing. I mean, not dull or repetitive for me, but... Um, but I thought I'd do something a little more intentional this time. Uh, another note, I just got new internet service here and hopefully it's uh, higher quality than before. So, um, let, well, if it goes out or is patchy, I apologize. It kind of is what it is. Um, and before we go too much further, I'd love to send a big up rest in peace and shout out. Uh, to my father, Eric McLuhan, whose birthday it is, or, well, is today. Uh, he would have been 79 years old if he hadn't died uh, coming up on three years ago now. So um, thanks, Dad, for everything. Uh, he's still with us uh, here in these books. So uh, good to go. Good so far. Thank you. Uh, appreciate that feedback. So, um, on Friday, I gave a little talk about this whole library and Marshall's library, um, and it was part of feedback. Uh, it was feedback number five uh, by Baruch Gottlieb, um, who does this curation of the Explorations magazine and the Dewline newsletter. And so this got me to talking a little bit about Explorations, um, and I thought I would do a little series on them. So that's what we're going to start with today. Um, today, I'm just going to give an overview. Uh, the reason why I thought um, I might do something is because a lot of the focus on the Explorations magazine um, is on the first nine issues. Uh, and it's not as widely known that there were 23 more issues following those first nine issues. The first nine issues kind of made a big splash on the scene, um, you know, became collectible as soon as they came out and hard to find, etc., etc. They're really hard to find now. Um, my dad left me one complete set, um, and I have a complete set of the first nine, uh, and I have copies of all the rest of them, although sometimes they're photocopies, unfortunately, but it's a complete set, so, you know, we have the content anyway. Um, to give uh, let's see, where do you even start with this? So, uh, here are, here's the first nine. Um, Explorations, uh, came out of, <sighs> so I don't prepare too heavily on this. Explorations was a literary magazine, um, that was partially funded or majorly funded by the Ford Foundation which also funded a seminar in culture and communication, which uh, I believe Marshall McLuhan was the chair of, although there were many participants. Um, the point was, uh, it was uh, a seminar in culture and communication, but it was very broad, it was interdisciplinary. Um, it had people in it from all kinds of fields across the humanities and even some of the sciences. Um, but, you know, more properly, English communication, anthropology, sociology, history, uh, biology, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and with the seminar, they also uh, founded this journal called Explorations. Here's issue one right here. Um, in this series, I'm going to every week focus on a different issue um, or, uh, you know, considering that there's 32 issues total, uh, I might cover more than one issue in a week uh, just to speed up the process, but 
um, at least one issue per week. They are very dense and they're packed. Um, Explorations 1 here, for example, contains uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13 contributions uh, from David Reisman, Robert Graves, Hans Selye, George Gregory Keeps, um, Horneck, Ralph Goodman, uh, Gerald Legman, Marshall McLuhan, and Northrop Fry. Um, the editors were Marshall McLuhan and uh, Edmund Carpenter, with associate editors Tom Easterbrook, Jacqueline Tierwitt, and D Don Carlos Williams. Um, McLuhan and Carpenter were the main editors through the whole thing, the first nine issues, um, with guest editors along the way. Uh, and the contributions are really fascinating and, like I said, dense, academic. Um, it's, it's hard going, so actually I'm giving myself quite a task to, to give you summaries every week, but I'll give it a shot anyway. Some really groundbreaking stuff in here. Um, I'll start off uh, because uh, in the first issue, they provide a very succinct uh, editorial statement. It says here, Explorations is designed not as a permanent reference journal that embalms truth for posterity, but as a publication that explores and searches and questions. We envisage a series that will cut across the humanities and social sciences by treating them as a continuum. We believe anthropology and communications are approaches, not bodies of data, and that within each of the four winds of the humanities, the physical, the biological, and the social sciences intermingle to form a science of man. Um, it, it's a very brief statement. I should also note, note that in the last year, two years, uh, something called the New Explorations Journal has been formed. Um, it's just online for the time being, as far as I know. That was headed by Bob Logan and some people at the University of Toronto. Uh, and that's something to have a look at. They're trying to sort of pick up where this left off. A little bit, although I don't know how much they know about the later explorations. We'll we'll see about that. Um, just about that statement, uh, it really echoed. This is very little known. Um, a, a journal from the '40s and '50s called Neurotica. Okay, and uh, I have two copies here of Neurotica Five and Neurotica Eight. Uh, Neurotica Eight. Um, well, okay. Let's start with the start. Neurotica 5 is called The Psychopathology of Time and Life, and that contains an article by Marshall McLuhan called The Psychopathology of Time and Life. This is the autumn 1949. Um, notice also, because I just named him in the first explorations, associate editor G. Legman. He's listed in Explorations 1. He comes back. There's another connection here. Um, anyway, uh, I brought up Neurotica because... Neurotica has a lengthy uh, editorial gesture in the front here, and I'll read it because it's very interesting. And I think it um, very much inspired uh, a lot of the ideas behind the forming of this journal, Explorations, even though uh, the tone is quite different, as you'll see. Editorial gesture. We define neuroses as the defensive activities of normal individuals against abnormal environments. We assume that human beings are born non-neurotic and are neuroticized later. Uh, so this is really more um, directed towards psychology, but we do not agree that it is the measure of social intelligence and psychiatric health to adapt to and rationalize for every evil. We do not subscribe to the psychosomatic fashion of throwing the gun on the corpse and the blame on the victim. We give space to the description of the neuroses with which human beings defend themselves from an intolerable reality, but it is with this reality that we are primarily concerned. Neurotica is the first lay psychiatric magazine. It is our purpose to implement the realization on the part of people that they live in a neurotic culture and that it is making neurotics out of them. The practitioners have their own journals. Neurotica is for the patients, present and future. I love this. As we see it, the little literary magazine is dead. The, quote, little mags that died to make verse free, unquote, have been replaced by subsidized vehicles for clique poetry, critical backscratching, and professional piddle, 
served up with a certain transparent overlay of regional or radical uh, futilitarianism. Having embraced the precocity and academicism that the little mag was raised up to, the, to fight, the current types find themselves wholly without purpose and practically without audience. Um, the rich, living benefits of a definite audience and a definite purpose, are reserved at present for the technical journals on the one hand and the jungle of propaganda slicks and perverted pulps on the other. Neurotico would like to bridge the gap with a popular approach to a technical subject. The reader will be required to rise to the material. It will not be watered down. It will not be digested, expurgated, vulgarized, and suited to the hypothetical lowest possible mentalities that are not interested in, in the first place. Um, it's interesting to note with this dig at conventional magazines that Marshall's article here, The Psychopathology of Time and Life, is a dig at, um, what's his name, Luce, Mr. Luce, who was the founder of Time Magazine, Life Magazine, and Fortune. And this, uh, this article by Marshall is a real takedown of, <laughs> of those three publications and Mr. Luce. Uh, he's, it's a tone that people who read, have read Marshall McLuhan or have seen Marshall McLuhan or heard Marshall McLuhan will not be familiar with because this is the Marshall McLuhan who wasn't afraid to give value judgments and, you know, be uh, devastatingly critical. For example, he says, I may as well say at once that I don't think the loose brain can do it. It's, uh, you know, kind of verges on offensive. Anyway, let me finish this here. We want to describe a neurotic society from inside. It is difficult and we need help. We believe that the psychiatric perspective can best describe and most clearly interpret the impact of human society on the human individual. We wish to popularize and perhaps implement that perspective. The psychiatrist encourages the patient to speak. In neurotica, the culture will speak and be analyzed. Uh, lastly, there seems to be a certain misunderstanding among writers as to our purpose and status. We want needle-nose analysis of a culture clearly going insane. We do not particularly want quasi-neurotic poetry and fake psychopathic prose, and that is what we are getting. We are appalled by the slowness with which the psychiatric and anthropological disciplines are filtering down into literature. Attempting to expedite this process, as we are, we find it painfully amusing to be told by uninvited literateurs reeling between peg house beer joint tea pad and the psychiatrist's couch that they will not write for neurotica because someone might think they're neurotic to writers who will take the chance we offer an unlimited choice of subjects the whole bloody mess freedom from editorial censorship and bread and beans honorarium of five dollars a printed page neurotica can't afford cannot afford to pay for material of the quality it demands somewhat comes off as a bit of a, a Shackleton's ad, you know, uh, and you can tell by the tone. Anyway, uh, really interesting, and there's definitely a connection between neurotica and explorations as journals, and as we've seen with Legman. Um, number eight here, just as a McLuhan interesting note, contains, uh, this is from 1951, and it contains a piece by Marshall McLuhan called The Folklore of Inter-Industrial Man, which is an adaptation of The Mechanical Bride pre-publishing. So this actually predates uh, the publishing of Marshall's work, The Mechanical Bride, The Folklore of Industrial Man, uh, which is kind of neat. Um, I picked these up off eBay or Abe Books or whatever. Anyway, that's a little bit of the background uh, journal to journal. Explora explorations uh, would go on. There are other people who could talk you know, more informally about the background, probably Baruch, and maybe we'll have him come give us uh, some some words about it, because uh, he's more familiar, but um, it's, it's a dense magazine with a lot of contributions. Um, Carpenter and McLuhan were the main editors of it, uh, although I expect Carpenter's hand was a little heavier in some ways than Marshall's. Uh, one to seven are fairly even between the two of them, I believe. Um, explorations 8, verbi, vocal, visual explorations, is a little bit different. 
uh, and again, I'm not totally sure about the background of it. Um, this one has Harley Parker playing a large role in the design of it, and it has a, a large uh, portion of it by Marshall McLuhan. Um, the first 24 pages are Marshall's, and that's the first half of the book, um, as well as a later, uh, a later piece inside third program of the human age. And uh, there is not a piece uh, by Carpenter, although his name is still on it. This is more Marshall. Uh, another interesting note is that it was published a few years later in a hardback by Beacons Press as a standalone thing. Uh, and finally, the final issue of Explorations, and I understand there's a bit of a to-do about it because um, Explorations was by subscription as well. They were partially funded by the Ford Foundation grant, but they also sold subscriptions. And um, from what I understand, they were slow to come out with the actual issues. Um, a bit of a familiar theme with some of Marshall's attempted works in Explorations in the Dew Line. Um, but anyway, from what I understand, Edmund Carpenter cobbled together eventually this final issue of Explorations, and it's quite different, where the first eight issues are all of a size. Uh, number nine is different. It's more the size of an LP. I think it's, that's a 10 inch or something. Um, it's quite slim, and it's simply called Eskimo Explorations 9. Um, interestingly enough... Uh, some years later, 1973, uh, Carpenter published this book, which kind of echoes this, called Eskimo Realities, um, which uh, has a lot of the material from this issue, um, but then some. It's a, it's a more expanded uh, treatise. Um, Carpenter did a lot of work in the far north with the Inuit, um, Eskimos he calls them, and uh, which is unfortunate and interesting at the same time, because supposedly he was adopted into uh, an Inuit family. Um, but anyway, so this was the final uh, edition of the original running of Explorations, uh, number nine, Explorations nine, Eskimo. Um, actually, uh, there was a an anthology printed in 1960, so. Uh, the original run was 53 to 59, uh, and then the next year they uh, produced this anthology of explorations, which contained not all, but uh, a lot. Here it says, all the essays in this anthology appeared in Explorations, a journal published at the University of Toronto under a Ford Foundation grant. Um, and uh, this is edited by Marshall and, and Edmund as well, Carpenter. And it says, um, I'll read just a little bit from their introduction. <clears throat> uh, Explorations explored the grammars of such languages as print, the newspaper format, and television. It argued that revolutions in the packaging and distribution of ideas and feelings modified not only human relations, but also sensibilities. It further argued that we are largely ignorant of literacy's role in shaping Western man, and equally unaware of the role of electronic media in shaping modern values. Literacy's vested interests were so deep that literacy itself was never examined, and the current electronic revolution is already so pervasive that we have difficulty in stepping outside of it and scrutinizing it objectively. But it can be done, and a fruitful approach is to examine one medium through another, print seen from the perspective of electronic media or television analyzed through print. Print. It's uh, worth noting that uh, 1960, Marshall was already deep into his project <clears throat> funded by the National Association of Educational Broadcasters, uh, which would eventually become Understanding Media, the Extensions of Man. The language here is, is very similar. Um, just to skip ahead to the end, uh, <clears throat> Whether this is good or bad remains to be seen. At the moment, it is important that we understand cause and process. The aim of this anthology is to develop an awareness about print and the newer technologies of communication so that we can orchestrate them, minimize their mutual frustrations and clashes, and get the best out of each in the educational process. 
The present conflict leads to elimination of the motive to learn and to, dis to diminution of interest in all previous achievement. It leads to loss of the sense of relevance. Without an understanding of media grammars, we cannot hope to achieve a contemporary awareness of the world in which we live. Gosh, people are still watching this. That's amazing. Hey, everybody. Um, so, uh, 1960, the anthology. A few years go by, and then Marshall brings back explorations as a magazine within a magazine contained within the University of Toronto uh, gra Varsity Graduate. Sorry, this is all flipped backwards. Um, and... At the head of this, so this would be Explorations 10, this issue, uh, there's a note, Explorations Revived, uh, Meeting Place Born. Varsity Graduate has spread its wings to embrace two additional magazines, each with an editor of distinction. Starting on page 49 is Explorations, edited by Professor Marshall McLuhan, Director of the University's Center of Culture and Technology. This is a revival of the famous magazine Professor McLuhan brought out with a Ford Foundation grant in the 50s. In its first incarnation, it had nine limited printings at, in cost a dollar. Any copies extant are valuable collector's items. It's interesting that Explorations came back, uh, Marshall McLuhan as the sole editor. However, uh, Carpenter is also present in this first issue um, so you flip to page 49 and you have explorations. Um, I have a series of, they were produced as off prints as well. These are, are what the uh, individual issues that were tucked, printed inside these magazines look like. Uh, but here we have it in the, the context, which is cool. Um, this issue, number 10, not numbered, uh, lists Marsh McLuhan as editor. Uh, and it has contributions by Sheila Watson, Edmund Carpenter, Wilfred Watson, Daniel Kappen, and Marshall McLuhan. So um, Edmund Carpenter is still around um, and involved, but no longer uh, editor with McLuhan. And that would uh, remain the case for the rest of the run. Um, like I said, there are 23 more issues of explorations that follow this, and they're they're really interesting. Um, it's it's on a smaller scale than the original run, but it's a, in a similar spirit um, because it cuts across all sorts of um, fields and different people contributing. Uh, for example. Um, this is the Christmas 1967 uh, graduate magazine. You see Marshall on the cover there uh, at, at Fordham University, uh, but he still produced the magazine, uh, even though he's having health problems at the time. This one's a lot of fun. It has two pieces in it, Bucky by Buckminster Fuller and The Library Environment by James Feely. Um, and indeed, there's a Buckminster Fuller piece in here, which uh, I'm looking forward to, to getting into um, with you guys a little bit later. Um, let's skip ahead just to the very end. This is the, the very last issue of Explorations that was printed in this oversized, oh, interesting, the last of the first run was an oversized issue and the last of the second run ends up being an oversized issue, uh, University of Toronto graduate. Um, in this last issue of Explorations, where are we from to? Uh, I guess I could have put a bookmark in, sorry. Um, this last issue is, is interesting. Uh, it has contributions by David Stainsfield, J.R. Rayfield, George Hauer, Gwendolyn Pilkington, and Robert Hoke. Uh, Nothing specifically by Marshall in this, uh, but at the very end, at the bottom here, uh, Marshall has the last word, and it says, Editor's note, Mr. Ken, e Ken Eady, and that's the editor of the vars Varsity Graduate, tells me that in all the years that the Exploration series has appeared in The Graduate, there has never been a response, pro or con, nor a comment of any sort the end. 
Um, so it's interesting uh, that the first run of explorations uh, really hit hard, uh, received a lot of interest. The second uh, run of 23 issues, not so much. Uh, why? I'm not totally sure. Um, maybe we'll find out. Uh, in any case, thanks for being here. Rest in peace, Dad. Um, we'll see you next week.